Okay, so I just uh, summarized everything that we already know. So the buyer's valuation, theta B, seller's cost, theta S, they all are positive real numbers. The decision is either zero or one, no trade or trade. The buyer's and the seller's utility function, and if you remember the VCG mechanism was such that the D basically maximizes the total sum of the V functions. And then the TI is, is calculated according to this function. In general, obviously, here we don't have N players. We have only two players. Um, so I am going to convert them into two-player version. It's simpler, obviously. So let's calculate the D first. Well, first of all, what does that mean in this scenario? There are two players, right? So the buyer's V plus seller's uh, V. So what is the buyer's V? If you remember, uh, it is... Uh, D theta uh, a buyer. Uh, by the way, here for now, I'm not going to use theta hat theta, all right? Uh, I'm not going to distinguish between uh, announced uh, valuation versus true valuation. I need to distinguish them when I show that the VCG mechanism is strategy proof, but I don't need to use them uh, right now. So whenever you see theta B, theta S uh, for now, uh, they all are actually declared. I mean, you can think of them declared uh, 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 types, uh, which are identical to their true types. Okay. Um, so uh, there's no harm with this assumption, at least for now, when we calculate the uh, uh, of um, uh, efficient uh, decision rule and the transfer functions, all right? Um, okay, so this is the VB function for the buyer. VS for the seller was minus D theta S, if you remember. So therefore, this summation is nothing but, uh, is the following, uh, D parenthesis theta B minus theta S. Agree? So therefore, the efficient uh, decision rule should be maximizing uh, the argument, the D, which is in uh, set D, which maximizing basically this, D times this term. Uh, well, so simple. So D is again, remember, either zero or one. So should I multiply this term by zero or should I multiply this term by one uh, in order to maximize this D times theta b theta s. Well, that depends, right? If this term is positive, I should definitely multiply this positive term with uh, one, not zero. Uh, because when I multiply it by one, this is going to be positive higher than zero because d is going to make this thing zero. However, if this term is negative, well then in order to maximize this term, I should multiply it by zero. So that means efficient decision rule D is this one if this term is positive theta B greater than theta S or equal to doesn't really matter a zero if theta B smaller than uh, uh, theta S again you can say smaller than or equal to because whenever it is uh, equal I mean theta B equals theta S it really doesn't matter whether D is zero or one okay um, so you can put equality on both. You can just put equality on one of them. Whether you put it here or here doesn't matter. But the idea is that whenever a buyer's valuation is higher than the seller's cost, uh, there should be trade. But whenever the seller's cost is much higher than the buyer's valuation, there shouldn't be any trade. That's the efficient decision rule. And again, it makes perfect sense, right? Because in this case, the seller produces this good at a cost. I mean, let's think like this is the iPhone and the iPhone, the Apple produces iPhone at a cost of $1,000 and the buyer's maximum willingness to pay is, I don't know, $500. Well, clearly there is no room for trade because Apple produces it at a cost of $1,000, but the buyer is willing to pay at most $500. So if there's a trade, uh, that means uh, the buyer is not going to pay enough money to the seller so that seller can cover its cost. So the seller is going to make a negative profit, which obviously seller does not want to do that. Instead, he could just say, I am not going to participate to this trade, right?
Okay, well, in, in that sense, therefore, the buyer's valuation, whenever it is higher than the seller's uh, cost, the trade should occur. So this is the efficient decision. Very good. Well, what about the transfer? So here's how we find the transfer. So first, let's find the transfer for the buyer. Okay, again, it's a function of uh, theta B and theta S. This is whether true or declared doesn't matter, okay? Uh, for simplicity, you can assume that these are both declared uh, types and true types, okay? So, again, doesn't matter. Uh, so here, what is the transfer for the buyer? Well, remember, the transfer for the buyer is going to be the sum of VJs of all the other uh, players J, other than player i. So here I'm calculating the buyer's transfer. So there's only one more player, j, different than i. i is here being buyer, so which is the seller. All right, so therefore this is the seller's v uh, minus, well, this term. Okay, so let's write this, max uh, d prime in d. Uh, what is this term? Well, this guy, again, uh, j different than i, there's only one guy other than buyer, which is seller itself. So therefore we are trying to uh, maximize VS, all right? So this term, hmm. okay. So first off, we know what VS is. Remember VS is equal to minus D times theta S. Okay, uh, what about this term? So to maximize VS. So remember again, VS is this term minus d theta s, d prime however, all right? Because I am choosing d prime to maximize this term. So theta s is a positive number, right? Uh, so in order to ma maximize minus d prime uh, theta s, well, I need to choose the d prime zero, right? Uh, so therefore this maximum thing is going to occur when d prime is zero. So therefore the maximum value of this term is gonna be just zero, okay? So therefore the buyer's transfer, theta b, theta s, is nothing but minus d theta s, okay? So what does that mean? That means, uh, the, let me write it here, the buyer's transfer is equal to when d is equal to one, uh, it is minus theta s. When d is gonna be equal to one, well, remember, if theta b greater than theta s, and when d is zero, this term is gonna be zero. When uh, theta b uh, less than or equal to theta s, okay? So let's check what it says. Well, it says if there is room for trade, the buyer should actually make transfer uh, at this amount, meaning this is the cost of the seller. The buyer should pay the cost of the seller. Makes sense. If there is no trade, the buyer should pay nothing, which makes sense perfectly as well. Very good. Well, now let's calculate the uh, seller's transfer. Okay, so I'm going to erase this part. Well, what is the seller's trans, oops, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm using VS. So the transfer of the seller. Well, there's only one player other than seller, which is the buyer. So therefore this is the VB, uh, the buyer's V, uh, which is calculated according to D, all right? Don't, don't forget that, theta B, uh, minus the maximum D prime in D, uh, this term. So again, this is V of uh, B. But however, it's calculated according to D prime and theta uh, B. Okay, so what is this term? We already know that the buyer's uh, V is equal to D times theta B minus, what about this term? Well, this term is again D prime times theta B, right? Uh, this one. Okay, well, if I want to maximize this, what should be the value of d prime? Well, theta b is a positive number. d prime is either zero or one. If d prime is zero, this term is gonna be zero. But if d prime is one, this term is gonna be theta b, which is greater than zero. So therefore, if I wanna maximize this term, I should choose d prime one, not zero. So when d prime is one, 
this value is going to take theta b. All right? So therefore, the transfer of the seller is equal to this. All right? Perfect. Well, uh, let me write it here. The transfer of the seller, it's again a step function depending on the value of d. When d is equal to 1, all right, which happens in this case, remember, if theta b greater than theta s, well, then the transfer of the seller is 0. So if trade occurs, the seller is going to pay nothing. Makes sense. Well, what about theta b less than or equal to theta s, meaning no trade occurs, so it's zero. Well, in this case, it's minus theta b. Okay, so what does that mean? That means the seller is going to make a payment uh, when there is no trade. Okay, that's awkward, right? I mean, when there is a trade, the seller does not make a payment, but when there is a trade, uh, the seller makes a payment. Okay, that's, that's awkward. I mean, there's no trade and the seller is still making a money, right? This is a weird transfer function. Uh, at this point, you may say there's something wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong. According to VCG, this is exactly what the transfers should be. Uh, but it's obvious that this transfer is not individual or rational. Um, and budget balance, which I will talk about uh, later. Uh, but again, this is what VCG mechanism is.